Hey folks, get your pencil, paper, calculator, because we're going to talk about some ratios. So let me share my screen with you. All right, there we go. Most of the time, people think about ratios as being fractions, but they're not actually fractions. But for review, let's, um, let's do a couple of reducing fractions here. So 32 uh, over 40. What number can you divide the top and the bottom by? That would be um, 8. So what's 32 divided by 8? That would be 4. And then what's 40 divided by 8? That would be 5. There is your reduced fraction in the lowest terms. Um, kind of nice. That's kind of the fourth grade method, though. What about the, what about the next method? Uh, what number can you divide 42 and 35 by? Well, that would be 7. But instead of dividing top and bottom by 7 like that, let me just do a little bit of a, a factoring thing. Can I write 42 as 7 times 6? And then 35 is 7 times 5? Yeah, and now do you see that the 7s themselves will cancel out because 7 divided by 7 is 1? And so your answer there then is 6 fifths? Um, that's the way that you're going to have to reduce fractions in algebra by factoring the top and factoring the bottom and then canceling common factors. You won't be able to use the division thing that you did previously. You say, why not? Because you won't know what the numbers are. But that's just looking forward. Doesn't plant that little seed in your mind. Now, some people might say, oh, we're going to change this into a mixed number and say one and one fifth. And I would say that's nice, but like I hate mixed numbers. So, ack, no. Because a ratio is not really a fraction. So a fraction, let's, let me just on the side here, draw a circle and let me just cut it up into four equal pieces. And if I got like shade three of them, you would say that's three over four. Both the three and the four tell you how many pieces of that circle you've got going on. The bottom tells you how many total pieces there are. The top tells you how many that are shaded. But the number three and the number four both really mean the same thing. Uh, but that's not true with a ratio. So a ratio... is a comparison uh, between two different things. Let me squeeze in here and get it all in the, in the view. Between two different things. Um, the focus is on the relationship between them. The relationship between the values, not the individual values. So a ratio is a comparison between two different things, and the focus is then on the relationship between them, not one, not what the individual values are. If I go back up here to the top one, I would say, all right, 32 over 40. Let me clear up a little bit of the clutter here so you can get an idea. The, the main focus really isn't 32, and the main focus really isn't 40. It's the relationship between those two things. How does 32 relate to 40? And by saying it's equal to 4 fifths, we're actually saying that it has the same relationship as 4 to 5. Okay, so am I saying that 32 is equal to 4? No, that's crazy talk. Is 40 equal to 5? No, but the relationship here between the top and the bottom, how the top one relates to or compares to or is in standing with the 40, that's the same thing as 4 to 5, and that's what a ratio is. And so that's why a ratio, you can't ever have a mixed number. Now, in, order to, in order to do a ratio, you really need to see a top part and the bottom part, and they need to be separate things. So mixed numbers really are not allowed in, in ratios. The most common ratio that you'll find in algebra is gonna be slope. Just you wait till you get the slope in algebra, it's so good. Okay, so how to write ratios. Ratios are written like this. You could say A, being A just being some number, A to B. So like, I don't know, the, the ratio of people wearing blue shirts to the people wearing green shirts or something like that. Or you can say a semicolon B. That's sometimes how you'll see it written. Like in, in vehicles or airplanes, there's like a thrust to weight ratio or something like that, where you're comparing how powerful the engine is compared to how much weight you have to move and something like that. But most of the time, we're going to see them like this, A over B, where we're going we're gonna to use a fraction format. Um, or you could simply say... Um, Oh, what was the third one? I had a third one. Oh, you could you could see it like this. A slash B. We're not going to use that one too much, but maybe you've seen that before if somebody says something like miles per hour or something like that. That's a ratio. 
Okay, so when you reduce the ratio to lowest terms, it's called the fundamental. So a ratio simplified with one, meaning the number one in the denominator is called the unit rate. And this is really actually important because that's usually what you compare things with. What's the unit rate? We'll talk more about that in just a minute. It means the uh, value for only one of the thing in the denominator, okay? So uh, unit rate means the bottom number is one. And so you're just looking at the top number. So write the basic ratio, the fundamental ratio, and the unit rate for each of the following. So number one, 15 blue-eyed people for every 20 brown-eyed people. Okay, so that would be 15. And let me, oh, let me change the color. 15 blue for every 20 brown-eyed people. I don't think I have a brown pen color. Sorry about that. Okay, that's the basic one. Uh, what does that reduce to? What's the fundamental? Well, you can divide top and bottom by five. So that would make it three blue to every four brown. That's the fundamental ratio there. Now, notice I'm putting units on there. I'm not just saying blue. I'm not just saying three and four or 15 and 20. I'm having to write in the idea that goes along with the numbers. 15 blue-eyed people is 20 brown-eyed people. So you have to understand the distinction there. It's not just 15, 20. You have to know what those things mean. Okay. Now, am I actually saying also that there's only three blue-eyed people and only four brown-eyed people? No, I'm not saying that. There was actually 15 and actually 20. So a ratio doesn't necessarily have to mean the actual things, but it means the relationship. And so we like to give it in the, in the simplified form to whole numbers, integers on the top and integers on the bottom. Now, the unit rate would then be just three divided by four. So one on the bottom, how would you write? No, I don't even need my calculator. I can't believe I'm reaching for my calculator for that one. What's three divided by four? You would say that that's 0 0.75 blue to one brown eyed person. Now, that's really not all that helpful, that last one there, in terms of what it means. You would think, how do you get 75% of a person, like they, did they get in a bad car wreck or something like that and lose their legs? <laughs> no. And even if they did, they would still be a whole person because personhood is not based upon how much of your body you got still attached. Um, you're either a person or you're not. Um, you're either alive or you're dead. So probably the, the fundamental will be the most useful in this case. Now, 33 seventh graders for every 11 sixth graders. I did this one on purpose because kids are going to write 33 and then they're going to write seventh graders and that's terrible because like is it 337 so let's not do let's not do that let's let the number be the quantity and then i'm going to write the word pencil paper um and then 11 sixth graders okay that would be like the actual or the the basic ratio um, notice that order is important here, and when I read them, 33 graders for every, this means this number is on top, this number is on the bottom. Um, order does matter. So when I reduce that, I'm going to get 3 to 1. 3 seventh, 1 sixth. That's the fundamental, and then that actually is the unit rate, so that's kind of both of them. So that tells you the relationship. you got three times as many 7th graders. Oops, I forgot the age. Um, as one as six graders, so it's like triple. So that tells you how they relate to each other. All right, 150 pounds for every 14 bicycles. All right, so 150. The unit symbol for pound is lb. You can look up why. For every 14 bicycles. Whoops, rolls. That's spelled badly. I gotta fix it. Bicycles. Okay, so now reduce that one. What numbers go into 150 and 14? Well, 150 is probably a lot, but 14, I only know of two, and that would be two and seven. And um, I know that 150 is divisible by two because it's even. So let's just do 150 divided by two. So that's gonna be seven bicycles on the bottom, and then 150 divided by two, was that 75? Yeah, I'd like I knew that, but since I'm on camera, I'm I'm kind of nervous. Seventy-five pounds 
for seven bicycles. That would be the, the fundamental. That's still not as helpful, though, as maybe the unit rate, because the unit rate now is useful. So how much for one bicycle? So 75 divided by 7 gives me, oh, there we go. Let's just call it 10.7. It's 10.7 something. Let's call it 10.7 pounds per bicycle. That would be your unit rate. That would be the value for just one. Okay. Now, the last one here. 10.92 for 12 ounces of coffee. This is actually the coffee that I drink. It's Gavalia coffee, and it's like it's about $10.90 for a 12-ounce bag. So let's do that ratio, $10 for 12 ounces, OZ, okay? That's the basic one. Um, now, what's the, what's the fundamental? When you got decimals on top, it, it probably won't reduce down to a whole number. The, the key to the fundamental was that it was, it was um, integer, 75 over 7 here, or this one was 3 over 1, or this one was 3 over 4. Those are nice fundamental ratios. Since we've got a decimal on top already, like, I don't know, 12 divisible by 2. So if I take 10.92 divided by... Uh, divided by two, I get $5.46 for six ounces. I can divide that by three. I get $1.82 for two ounces. Like, I'm not sure that any one of those is a fundamental. Like, how is that, like, whole numbers on top and on bottom? So I don't know that you can do a fundamental on this one, but you can do it unit rate, and that's what's important. So if I get it down to 1, I'm just going to go back to the beginning, 10.92 divided by 12 equals 0 $0.91 per 1 ounce. That's actually now helpful because that tells you the price for a single unit of the coffee and it's measured in ounces. What if they offer like a family size bag or something like that? Family size bag of 30 ounces. I'm just going to make some numbers up here. As a, as a practice one. What if they say it's a 30 ounce bag and it's, uh, let's see here, $30. I'm like, gee, which one is, which one's cheaper? Well, the cheaper one is just to buy the smaller bag because it's less money. But there may be a question of getting more coffee for the same amount of money. Because usually when you buy a, in bulk or you buy a larger bag of something, you, you get more of the stuff for the same amount of money, right? You know about that? Like when you go to Sam's and you, you're like, gee, there's a 50-pound bag of Swedish meatballs. I guess those meatballs are pretty cheap. I don't know who would ever eat 50 pounds of Swedish meatballs, but you know what I'm talking about. So let's do a comparison here. Which, which one is actually the better buy? Which one gives you more coffee for the same amount of money? So I'm going to do, again, money on top. $30 for, what did I say, 30 ounces? Sorry. I got a zero for the O and a 30 for the ounces here. So what is that? Well, that's flat $1 per one ounce. Is that a better buy than the 12 ounces? No, because now you can compare them directly. This one's cheaper than this one for the same amount of coffee. So look for this the next time you go shopping at the store or something like that. Look for the unit rate that's on the price tags. I used to have to go into the store with a calculator and to figure stuff out. You're like, boy, you're geeky, Mr. Marsh. Yeah, I'm so geeky, I even had the calculator on my watch. I'm like figuring out the little, little Casio calculator watches. Which one's the better buy? The the 12 ounce box of Frosted Flakes or the 46 ounce box of Frosted Flakes? Because you're gonna eat the whole box, you know? So it's not, there's nothing gonna go to the waste like the Swedish meatballs. You're gonna eat the whole box. See which one's the better buy? And you're like, well, gee, I don't have enough money to buy the bigger box. Well, then that answers your question for you. But sometimes when you buy in bulk, it's usually a lower rate, but not always. So pay attention to that. All right. Hope you learned something. See you next time. We're going to talk about proportions.